Hi there, and welcome to analyzing GitHub data with Firebolt. Over the next couple of videos, we will take a look of indexing data, storing data and querying it, and also presenting it. And all of this will be the so-called GitHub archive. So let's get started. First, what is the GitHub archive? Basically, the GitHub archive is a list of files which contains events that happened at GitHub over time. So an event can be anything like you starting a repository, opening an issue, pushing some code or creating a release for one of your projects. And whenever your repository is public, those events are exposed via an API. And the GitHub archive reads this API and stores all of the events in a JSON file based on every hour. And with this JSON file, it's pretty easy to get up and running and create an index for data to query. Let's take a look at the data we are about to query a little bit further. So the GitHub archive data that I have here is basically starting at the 1st of January 2015 and ending right now. All in all, we have 5 billion events across 267 million repositories with a little bit more than 50 million users. So that's a lot of data. And if we take a look at the data over time, you can see that the traffic on GitHub has basically increased a lot. It all started relatively moderate with like 14 million events a month in 2015. And now we're easily at more than 120 million events in October 2022. So the amount of traffic increases, the total events increase, uh, and you can see that GitHub gets more and more important as a platform. If we take a look at the events of the type that they are, like being staring a repository or pushing some code, like the biggest activity here is actually pushing some code to any of the branches of a repository. Almost half of the events are code pushes, which also means that almost half of the events or a little more even are not pushes, but everything around that, like issues, pull requests, reviews, creating releases. So there's a lot of more things going on than just pushing code. And this is what makes GitHub a platform. It's not just about the code. Let's take a look and gather some statistics of some repositories. So we can take a look at all the events that happened across a repository. If we start with Elasticsearch, you see a pretty common pattern here that Elasticsearch is one of the more well-known projects across GitHub and it has a high constant activity going on. A little bit higher here, but you can see that there's lots of people working on Elasticsearch. And you can also see this based on the number of committers that we have some committers with several thousand commits, but even the committers at the lower scale are still like high value and high speed committers. So Elasticsearch is mainly driven by, by paid committers as a company project. One interesting part are the commenters. So we can see here that why we have a lot of people commenting, there is two that stand out or especially one and that is Elastic Machine. And that's one more pattern that occurs over time on GitHub nowadays, that there's lots of bots and helping tools doing tasks that you don't want to do manually and there's lots of automations going on. And this is a very clear pattern across commands, across GitHub Actions, uh, that we also see with GitHub happening. So let's take a look at another, uh, at a few other repositories. So we can take a look at the Spring Project Spring Framework, which is basically one of the most well-known Java frameworks uh, nowadays. And the Spring Framework has been around for a long time, way before this data set started. But even here, you can see that it's basically run by not a lot of people, like few people having the most done the most work. And also, it's still pretty active today. So that's a good sign for a project. And on top of the Spring Framework, there's Spring Boot, which is sort of the yeah, de facto uh, web framework nowadays for many Java developers. And you can also see here, like with 33,000 issues and PRs, 70K thousand commits since 2015. There's lots of activity, lots of buzzing. Uh, there's a peak over here, but you can see here that as well as with Elasticsearch, there's a steady development. And again, we have a few people uh, doing most of the work, be it committing the code or commenting on issues. 
So we can also take a look at maybe Grafana, which is another well-known project. And uh, Grafana also is commercially backed, uh, but you can see here how the activity basically increased over the years, probably because there was more people who worked on the project, who also worked on the project full-time. Uh, again, we have 140K comments, which is a lot, uh, and high activity here in, in, in general. And also the initial pro project founder is still the, the top committer, which I always think is a really, really good sign. Uh, we could do the same for Prometheus. Prometheus being the yeah, most well-known system to, to gather metrics. Um, and also here, Prometheus is over 10 years old, so we don't see the start of the project. But again, activity has been really, really constant over all the years. Also with a, with a couple of people involved as the committers as well as the, the top commenters. And maybe one last thing before we move on, that's the HashiCorp Wall project, uh, which is a secrets management tool. Uh, also a really nice project, not as big yet because it was founded a little later uh, in 2015 in April, but also high activity, few major committers over here. Uh, and also you can see the increase of activity over this year basically. And when you take a look at a lot of those projects, it's often that there's an increased activity in 2020. Uh, that's probably because lockdowns happened and people were spending more time at home than they were spending on the road. So we cannot just see people or we cannot just see stats over repositories. We can also do the same as stats over users. So uh, this is a committer on the Firebolt JDBC driver, uh, which started pretty recently. So that's the reason why you see most of the activity over here. Uh, but let's take a look at some other people. How about Guido van Rossum, the inventor of Python, uh, who at some point said he had retired and then came back out of retirement. Uh, I suspect that may have happened over here between 2015 and 2016. Uh, you can see like uh, Guido is really, really active, doing a lot of things, having worked on a lot of different repositories where events have been created and also the total events is, is quite a bit actually. So this is a a high activity pattern if you want. Uh, let's take a look at another person that's also a rather common pattern. This is uh, Rashid. Uh, he's the original inventor of Kibana, the sort of UI on top of Elasticsearch. And we can see here that um, in 2015 and 16, he sort of handed over many things and tasks of Kibana and kind of retreated back from the project uh, until there's not a lot of GitHub activity right now at all. And that's also a common pattern of people building some well-known software that over time they basically take a step back and let others do the work after they did this for a couple of years. Um, we can also see something interesting with the, uh, one of the founders of HashiCorp, Mitchell Hashimoto. Um, and he basically at some point ran the company and then decided to go back to become an individual contributor. And I think there's a, some kind of um, guess where this probably have happened, where the GitHub activity took up again uh, compared to a really low one before that. So this is also something that you can see over time. Uh, and if I take my own user info, there's another interesting information in there that uh, if you become a parent, you tend to have much less events going on just because there's no time and you need to catch up on sleep. Uh, this is basically what happened over here. Uh, and at some point there's also a recovery from that. So you go back to your regular activity, uh, maybe sometimes also in the evening if you're able to. Um, and one more thing that you can see here is that I switched teams between those years, uh, which also changed the way how I worked and also changed my GitHub activity. So um, this is a pretty common theme you see over those statistics, also people switching jobs, for example, and then working on maybe private repositories that are not part of this data set. Um, and that's how you see things. All right, that was a quick introduction into the Streamlit app. Uh, in our next session, we will take a closer look at the queries because basically every visualization or every metric you see here is based on a SQL query. And we would like to figure out like what a SQL query like this looks like, but also why is it so fast? So we will not only cover the queries, but also the, in many cases, aggregating indices that are underlying so that we understand why those queries are fast. Thank you for listening and see you next time.